owes to ourselves are what are the public finance management rules and regulations that are in place and how do they help the economies of our country? And we want to agree that there is no shortage of rules and laws and regulations in the manner that I've said. We also want to agree that in as much as we are talking about our respective domestic arenas in terms of the laws and regulations, we are also members of regional bodies and that these regional bodies have come to recognize that going forward our public finance management rules must be rules and regulation and laws that are in accord with our regional realities so that if you are within SADAC and you want to trade within SADAC our laws must be harmonized so that what is happening in Namibia does support what is happening in South Africa and what is happening in Eswatini is also supporting what is happening in Lesotho. Are we harmonizing our laws in that way? And these are the questions that members of SADAC must ask as they talk about the financial rules that they are bringing about. In the context of the African continental free trade area, and we all know that from this year, uh, the headquarters and the secretariat of SCTF has now been opened in Accra, Ghana. It is assumed that we will begin to move our economies in a direction that is going to ensure that we facilitate trade. But once again, you can begin to see that Africa is beginning to read from different texts. Look at the simple question, and I'm saying this because I know there are some members of the ECOWAS here. In last year, the African countries in ECOWAS agreed that they would have a currency called ECO. And it was agreed that there were certain fundamentals that were to be realized so that the ECO becomes a reality this year. Countries started moving in that direction, and I think Togo had started meeting those considerations. Before the year was out, we see that the Côte d'Ivoirians and the French have now hijacked the entire process. They have renamed CFA Franc into an ECO, and that particular enterprise is now torpedoed. We must always remind ourselves that even as we do things in Africa, there is no shortage of individuals and countries which will disrupt Africa for their general good. And I want to say this, I've said it somewhere before, but I'll say it again. Have you seen jointly with me lately in the last one year, I'm speaking in harsh tones, <laughs> that African leaders were in Beijing, did you see that? And that the whole idea of having African leaders in Beijing is that they deal with their legal regime in a manner that ostensibly will be beneficial to Africa. You accountant general, tell me, not now, later. Is it possible that when leadership goes to Beijing and Beijing makes certain prescriptions, our laws must be made in such a manner that addresses the things that will define our financial relationship with China? I'm posing this question. Did you see our leaders in Sochi, in Russia? Once again, it is how Russia is going to relate to Africa. Is there a possibility that it will become necessary to define and reform our laws in a manner that will define our relationship with Russia? Does it affect how we legislate and how we regulate? Did you see our leaders in Berlin, in Germany, on how Germany is going to relate with African countries? Is it possible that that will also define how we make our rules and regulations? Did you see our leaders only last week in the United Kingdom in the context of the Brexit? And the Brexit, the British, after the Brexit is going to focus on Africa? I say these things simply because sitting as you are here as technocrats, you know what ought to be done. And nine out of ten times you do the right things. But what are the political variables that are going to define how you make law and how you execute the law? Because that is going to define 
how Africa actually grows because mm. ultimately the question is how do we then grow our economies and very lastly when we talk about economic growth what do we really mean when we talk about economic growth what do we mean in my own lay understanding we mean that the quality of the lives of the people is improved that there is more disposable income in the pockets of the middle class so that when they are financing a mortgage they are able to finance that mortgage it means to me that when government talk about free education it is free education not education which is then financed by some levies which are imposed on the parts it means to me that our health services are in such a way that when our people are sick they can go to a hospital and they can get medication it means to me that young people have opportunity for innovation invention and employment where it is it means for me that we are adding value to our agricultural products and we are no longer relying on primary products it means that we are able to harness our resources whether it's oil or diamond and we are capable therefore to improve our tax revenue and we are capable of financing our projects in a manner that reduces our debt burden in a manner that we have budget that can meet our needs and i'm saying that growth of a statistical nature will not be the growth that africans are looking for africans are looking for growth that is going to ensure that the quality of our young men and women and our people in general will have improvement in their life i have no illusions in my mind that is achievable. I have no illusions in my mind that it requires laws that are supportive of that agenda. I have no illusions in my mind that it requires appropriate regulations. I have no doubt in my mind that it requires rules. I have no doubt in my mind that it requires a fiscal environment that is informed by real economies. I have no doubt in my mind that it requires a macroeconomic environment that will support it. I have no doubt in my mind that it must be cascaded into a macroeconomic environment. And I have no doubt in my mind that you accountants general here who are technocrats must have your ideas have an intimate intercourse with the political agenda of the country and that they are aligned in one direction. It is only then that public finance management will spur growth in Africa. It can be done. It is not going to be easy. It is not for the faint-hearted. But if we don't do it, we are in trouble. If I said anything beyond that, I would be messing up. I don't intend to.